Hey, April here for a Sup Tip Tuesday, but this week we're actually gonna combine the Sup Tip with a bit of an outrigger tip. I got an email the other day that said, April, what rudder are you gonna be using in your outrigger canoe for the wild buffalo relay? So this is a 41 mile crossing from Catalina to Newport. And if there are big ocean waves and big bumps, I guarantee I'm gonna be using the grip rudder. My options would be the grip, kind of this, the stock, traditional up and down rudder and the weed rudder. Um, if it were really glassy flat, I would use this weed rudder. But because I'm assuming the ocean might be big and there could be some bumps to be had, fingers crossed, I want a rudder that has more hold, more surface area, um, kind of applied further down into the water column and holds when I get that lift on those big ocean bumps. So let's talk a little bit more about each rudder, um, kind of expanding on our SUP tip. So again, the grip rudder, if you notice the difference between that and these smaller weed rudders, the weed rudder is swept much further back, which that's ideal if you know you're gonna be paddling in a location with a lot of kelp, a lot of weeds. This is gonna, the rake here is gonna help shed all of that debris. Whereas the grip rudder could get those weeds held onto it, but I'm gonna take this if, again, the bumps are big. The reason you're gonna run a rudder like this as opposed to the original stock rudder, this one's good for kind of like all conditions. This is the stock that comes with the Ayukai and the Kehele. And it, it's nice, it goes down in the water column, helps a little bit with roll the same way that a sailboat keel kind of helps with that. But you'll notice the grip rudder has a little bit more surface area distributed down at the base. And that extra surface area not only is gonna grab and help you steer on those ocean bumps, but that's also gonna add some stability by holding more water in the water column. Both of these are gonna track really well um, as well, which isn't as big a deal in the outrigger canoe. But if I were to be on a stand-up paddleboard, the difference is the same. So this could be a sub tip. Um, and I'll link to my article about the differences in fins. Here you'll see the downwind fin for my stand-up versus a flat water racing fin, which the racing fin does not reach down as low into the water column. It's not gonna have as much drag. That's gonna enhance my speed, um, but all the surface area kind of tucked up close to the board, that's gonna help tracking. Big difference between the outrigger canoe uh, kind of racing flat water rudder and a flat water racing sup fin. You don't have the ability to steer with your feet on the stand up, you're steering with your blade all the time, kind of like a V1. Um, so I do need a little bit more surface area on a stand up fin than I would on an outrigger rudder to keep me tracking straight. But again, the sweep back rate is gonna help with the shedding of the weeds. Whereas if I want to go downwind in the bumps out in the ocean, a nice straight up and down into the water column, that's gonna help me pivot, turn, uh, control my, my direction, changing direction on those bumps, offer a lot of stability, um, and also keep this fin in the water when the tail lifts up. I'm gonna keep it all engaged all the time. Um, all right, if I'm gonna do a course race, however, I kinda want the best of both worlds. I'm actually, I use a much smaller fin, kinda like this one that was developed for the prone boards, this Bark RFD from Futures. It doesn't reach, as down, uh, reach down as low into the water column like this downwind fin, but um, it also doesn't have as much surface area as my flat water tracking fin. I don't want it to reach as far down into the water column because that's gonna slow me down, increase my drag. Again, this is great when you're flying in the open ocean and using mother nature to generate tons of momentum. When you're relying only on camera one, camera two, mic check, uh, then you probably need something with a little less drag. Again, I love um, my keel when I'm going in the flats and I don't wanna switch sides very often, 
but a course race where I need to turn on a dime and I need very little resistance, this tiny little RFD fin is really ideal. Now, it's not gonna track as straight as, as the keel, but that's okay. I can either switch sides a lot. It's gonna be a much higher cadence anyway. My arm's gonna going to fatigue quicker and I'm gonna need to switch sides more often as long as your paddle switch from side to side is fast and efficient. That should not make a big difference if that's something you need to work on. We'll talk about that in another tip later on. But that is it for today. If you have any questions about fins, scope the article that we wrote at Carolina Paddleboard Company in the past. I'll be linking to that below. And also you're welcome to email me anytime. Ask me any questions. April, what rudder are you using in this race? April, what fin are you using in this race? I'll tell you, I actually don't have any sort of fin sponsor, so I'm going to be completely unbiased. So uh, I actually, I have my black projects in my board right now is the only reason it's not in here. But I love these features fins. They all do a great job. Um, I have a couple FCS fins in my box as well. And just let me know. Um, I'll give you some unbiased advice.